Hello, Emmanuel here. Today, in part 2 of the Using Substance Painter with Blender and Octane, I'm going to talk about how to work with UDIMS. If you missed part 1, you can find the link in the description. As with standard materials, this can be done automatically with my plugin, but today I'm going to explain how to do it manually. And if after learning the how-to you want to save some time and prefer an automated process, you can always use my plugins. The links are in the description as well. Currently, I'm using Painter version 2021, which is the second major version that has two possible UDIMS systems. The Legacy, which treats each texture set as a UDIMS tile, and has some major limitations like painting across tiles and being able to only work with one material at a time. And a new workflow, which is a proper UDIMS painting system. Unless you have a pipeline that requires the Legacy version, I would recommend to always use a new workflow. You can select which one to use in the new project window of Painter. Consider that after selecting one, you cannot change it afterwards. For this video, we'll be using the new workflow. As you can see in this project, I have two texture sets or materials, each with its own UDIM tiles. If you're not familiar with UDIMs, think of them as multiple UVs grouped together and organized in a 10 by 10 grid, with each UV represented by a four digit number called tile, starting with 1001. The first row goes from 1001 to 1010, the second from 1011 to 1020, etc. As you can see here, you can organize your UDIMs any way you want. You can leave empty tiles between them, use different resolutions, even different file formats. The only real rule is that for Blender and Octane, you always need to have some UVs on the first tile, the 1001. With that said, let's see how we need to set up the export preset we created in the previous video in order to work with UDIMs. All we need to do in order to be able to use the same preset with standard UV textures and UDIMs is to add an optional UDIM variable to the map names. We do this by writing the UDIM key preceded by a point inside a parenthesis. This will tell Substance that if the project is UDIM based, it needs to include the UDIM number to the map name. And if it's not, just ignore it. Let's add the UDIM key to all the maps. And now we're ready to export the maps. As you can see, the results are multiple maps per channel, each one representing a UDIM tile. For example, with the dress material, I have five base colors, five metallic, five normal, five opacity, and five roughness maps. With the files exported, it's time to go to Blender. All I have in my Blender project is an HDRI map, the mesh with texture in Painter, and a simple octane material with an output and universal shader connected. Now, the process to create the material is basically the same as the one I showed in part one. The only difference is that instead of using an image text node or a float text node, we need to use an image tile text node. So let's create it. And now let's add the image files. To do it, we need to select the 100 image of the channel we want to add. In this case, let's select the base color 1001. This will load all the UDM images into Blender. We can verify that by opening the image editor and selecting the image. As you can see, everything is loaded. And if you open the image properties, we can see that the source is automatically set to UDM tiles and that a list of all the available tiles is already filled. Let's connect the tile node to the video color input of the universal material. And the result is not what we expected. Everything is black except the geo that was in the 1001 tile. The black comes from the empty tile color parameter of the tile texture. This is the default value to be used if Octane cannot find the required UDIM tile at render time. If we change it, we can see the black in Octane changes as well. Anyway, to fix the issue of the missing textures, we need to make the file name dynamic. And to do it, we just need to replace the 1001 of the file name with 1% dash i. This will inform Octane that it needs to use a dynamic name based on the parameters of the node. But since we haven't set them yet, it's still not working. So let's configure them. First, we have the grid size X and Y. These parameters define the size of the tile grid. For example, we can have a 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, etc. UDIMS almost always works with a 10x10 grid. The only exception will be if you're only using one row of UDIM tiles. Then you can have a grid Y value of 1. Since we're using multiple rows, let's set it to 10x10. 10 10. The next parameter is the starting value of the UDIMS. And as you remember, the first tile of our textures is 1001. So we need to set this to 1. And finally, we have the digit parameters, which indicates how many digits are we using. For UDIMS, it always needs to be 3, because the first number 1 is already considered in our dynamic file. 
As you can see now, the base color is working properly. We set the gamma to 2.2 since this is the base color map, and now we need to add the rest of the maps. Since we already checked this part in the first video, I'll do it off camera. Just remember that after adding the 1001 image to the image tile text node, you need to make the file name dynamic and set the parameters as I just explained. And all the maps are working now. The greatest advantage of using workflows is that if you want to increase the resolution of your materials, you only need to create one shader network and you can use it in multiple UV tiles. The alternative will be to create multiple materials, one for each UV, for example, five different ones in this asset. As you can imagine, this will be a pretty slow process, and also will be a lot harder to manage along studio pipelines. Now imagine movie assets, they tend to have 70, 90, or even over 100 UV tiles. The complexity there can escalate pretty fast. Anyway, that's all for now. In the next videos, I'll show you how to create shading networks for other renderers. See you next time.